1st of August 1957 was the day that every Malaysians would definitely remember because that was the time where our first ever Prime Minister, Allah Yarham Tunku Abdul Rahman, went up to the stage and shouted those words of freedom, Merdeka, Merdeka, Merdeka. Assalamualaikum and a very good morning to everyone, all of you, wherever it is that you're watching us and welcome to a special edition of the National Day Parade 2024 together with me, Mio Adlan and Brandon Jirapol. My goodness, I'm thrilled to be here. Rise and shine, Malaysia, as this is the reason why we are celebrating all the good times. Also, the bad times. Always remember, no matter what you do, no matter where you go, we are all Malaysians. And let's continue carrying this flag and put this flag on the map wherever we go. And you know what? Just taking this opportunity to wish mm. everybody out there Selamat menyambut hari kebangsaan 2024. My goodness, I must say, Putrajaya is now yeah. bursting in a array of colours as the nation gears up to celebrate their country's Independence Day, 67 by the way. Exactly. So whatever it is, again, if you are unfortunate enough not to be in Adatara Putrajaya, but thank you so much for tuning in together with us here today because why? We're going to be giving you live updates of whatever that is happening down there in Adatara Putrajaya throughout the whole day, the whole morning actually, yep. for the National Day Parade 2024. It is definitely, will be a sight to behold because Again, mm. if you're in Dataran Putrajaya, obviously it is so happening right now. A lot of things are happening right now in Dataran Putrajaya. I'm actually right. quite jealous not yeah, being able exactly. to be and there. Exactly. We're here down yeah. in KL, in, in <laughs> Ankasapuri. You know, we're envious of all our colleagues down there and uh, all the Malaysians down there. But again, wherever it is that you're watching us, again, we do hope that you're going to enjoy the show today, for yeah, sure. Exactly. And remember, yeah, you can uh, share this whole celebration to your friends and family because we are on TV, okay? Saloran Berita RTM. We are even on Facebook at Ber Rita RTM, man. Well. I mean, you yep. can always check us out. And now I think it's time. Yep. To head on over to Dataran Putrajaya. Okay. In a bit, yes. In a bit, yeah. But now let us, you know, show you this special uh, package that we have set for you. Enjoy. This is Stadium Merdeka. This is also a sacred place that gathered tens of thousands of people to witness the creation of the nation's history. Did you know, Stadium Merdeka is considered an engineering marvel of Federation of Malaya when it began construction in the year 1956 and took only a mere year to complete, which is quite remarkable indeed. This stadium was completed on August 21st, 1957, at a cost of 2.3 million ringgit. Stadium Merdeka was officially opened by Thunku Abdul Rahman Putra Al Hajj on August 30th, 1957, and is seen as the home to the nation's historic moment when Thunku Abdul Rahman declared independence on August 31st, 1957. It has 22,000 seats for spectators, with 3,000 of them being covered. Many national events were held here in the past. Currently, various efforts have been made to restore the nostalgia and glory of Stadium Merdeka from being neglected. Hashtag the Minagara. See you again. Hashtag Demi Nagara, that's right. Wherever you're tuning us from, always remember you can join us on social media. You can wave the Jalo Gamilang, you know, take a selfie exactly. wherever you are in front of the TV, in front of the tab. Let us know where you're watching from and don't forget to hashtag Jiwa Merdeka. Exactly, hence the theme that we have brought to you down here for the National Day 2024. The theme of uh, the day actually mm -hmm. is Malaysia Madani Jiwa Merdeka. Just a bit of information mm -hmm. that we would like to share with all our fellow viewers and together 
together, all of us here in the studio as well. The theme expresses the freedom of people from negative interpretations Beautiful. of patriotism and how to form a strong and progressive unity through social and economic integration and thinking. Thinking, I think that's the major keyword that we can take away from this because right. we need to make sure that we think before we act and within the last 67 years, you know, the, the nation and its people, us Malaysians, we have been thinking greatly. We have been thinking out of the box mm -hmm. in making sure that we move Malaysia forward to its glory days and more glory days to come, inshallah. Wow, early in the morning, 7.30 a.m., Mr. Mio is being <laughs> all poetic and stuff. Totally loving the spirit, bro, by yeah. the way. No, I'm loving it, loving it every single day, yeah. But of mm. course, when it comes to spirits, you know, uh, going through Merdeka, celebrating yeah. the country's 67 Independence Day, this is not just us, but yeah, the entire okay. nation. And of course, we brought three specific guests mm -hmm. in the studio with us to talk about Merdeka and most importantly, to understand what's it all about with regards to the organization that they're <laughs> representing. So Mio, shall we bring them in? Shall We shall, because we have three good-looking gentlemen down here, three gentlemen in uniform. We have, first of all, to my right, Colonel Rashdan bin Abdul Rashid, commander of the 1st Infantry Division, Royal Engineers Regiment. Sir, thank you so much for coming down. Thank you. Okay, and also beside him, we have uh, Captain Muhammad uh, Rizwan bin Ayyub, Ridwan bin Ayyub, Director of Operation and Interagency, Royal Malaysian Navy Headquarters. Captain, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. And of course, last but not the very least, obviously, we have Inspector Muhammad Adil bin Japa, Inspector Analysis, Data, Communications, Corporate PDRM, Secretary, Inspector General Police. I must say, gentlemen, all of you are looking sharp this morning in your uniform. I, I'm a bit jealous, actually. I'm a bit jealous. <laughs> I wanted to ask them, actually, before the show, before it all started, do you have, like, a spare uniform that you can actually wear <laughs> so that we can look as good as you, right? But then again, mm. jokes aside, let's talk about Hari Kebangsaan. You know, mm. 67 years we are celebrating and obviously more to come. To represent the ATM, to represent the TLDM and also to represent PDRM. When you hear the word Merdeka, it doesn't have to symbolise freedom every single year just for the month of August and also September. But really, truly, what does it mean when you hear the word Merdeka? For you, for the women, for the men in your uniform representing the country, protecting its sovereignty, what does it mean to you? We'll start with Kuno. Kuno Rashdan first. Mm. Uh, firstly, uh, thank you for having me here to represent the Malaysian Armed Forces or MAF. It is a big honour for me to be able to share some insights from the MAF on today's celebration as it progresses. Now back to the question, uh, the Merdeka or what we call National Day now. It's, it is certainly a hugely significant day for the MAF. Firstly, it is a celebration of the nation's independence and sovereignty. That's right. And it's a time for us to reflect on the struggles and sacrifices of those who came before us. That's those right. who have sacrificed and given so much to be, so that we are able to enjoy the freedom and liberty that we are having today. Mm -hmm. Secondly, this National Day is also about uh, uh, the opportunity for the MEF to showcase our preparedness, our capability, mm -hmm. our strength to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, by public display of our assets and personnel. I hope we can reassure the public of how prepared we are to conduct our primary task, which is to defend the sovereignty and protect the territorial integrity mm -hmm. of the nation. Uh, and thirdly, this um, National Day is also a chance for us to bridge the gap between the military and civilian population so that we can we are seen not just as a defender of the nation, but also as integral members of the society. Fantastic, Fantastic. Wow. lovely. <laughs> as much as we obviously want to hear, you know, from our two gentlemen down here, but we have just received a signal to actually go down directly to Dataran Puchajaya. Again, the yeah. whole ceremony will be starting, you know, with the arrivals of all the dignitaries and, of course, His Majesty uh, the King. But now, yeah, let's go down and see what's happening, who the arrivals, there as you we can have see. It. So we from can see the, yeah. right now is the arrival of uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. As you can see right now, and uh, here's who we have. The arrival of Yang Ahmad Bohomad, Datuk Sri Fadila Yusuf, Deputy Prime Minister, and together with his spouse. Yep. For all the information, fellow viewers, because yeah, yeah, because we will be uh, officially starting mm -hmm. the National Day Parade once uh, the arrival of His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the King of Malaysia, makes his way to the Royal Box. But obviously, before that, again, we have all of the uh, other fellow dignitaries coming in. 
as mentioned by Brandon, the arrival of the uh, Deputy Prime Minister uh, coming in. And, That's right. And as you can see here, each and every one of our dignitaries, when they come in, there's a special salute, there's a special, uh, well, well, what is this? Honor, honor. That's given to the Deputy Prime Minister and also the Prime Minister. Now, what's significant about this is that it will be different when the King arrives, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim. Now, we call it the Kawalan Kehormatan Utama, mm -hmm. the main guard honour that will be happening soon, as you can see right now. You know, it's iconic, you know, this kind of uh, celebration because we don't see this every single time. Yeah, here. exactly. I mean, like, it is definitely saved for special occasion. As you can see here, the men in white uh, giving their salute to the uh, dignitary, specifically to That's Yang right. Abad Muhammad Adatuk Sri Haji Fadilah bin Haji Yusof. And next up, according to the schedule, will be the arrival of uh, the Yang Abad, of the Yang Abad Muhammad Deputy Prime Minister uh, Dato Yang Ahmad Bohmat Dato Sri Dr Zaid Hamidi That's later right. on. So That's yeah, right. from time to time we'll be coming back uh, to uh, the Dataran Pushajaya to bring you live coverage again. We are anticipating a lot of things happening down there. But before that, maybe while we are waiting yeah. for the next uh, dignitary mm -hmm. to actually make his way down, let, let's go back to our fellow guests here. Again, we got Captain Ridwan here. Um, initially, to what uh, Colonel uh, yeah, Rashidan is actually yeah. mentioning just now, from for your from your perspective, actually, your feelings as well as your understanding of the National Day, you know, after 67. Uh, 67 years, you know, being independent and now moving forward with our country, country, how important it is to remind the people of Malaysia. It is very important for us to know our history so that we can use that to make sure that we don't take things for granted, mm -hmm. Captain. Yeah, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I guess... The important points have been taken by Colonel Rashidan. <laughs> it's similar, uh, isn't it's it? similar. It's similar. It's <laughs> similar. But yeah, you're all for yeah, of course. Exactly. Yeah, uh, I think this day is very significant to Malaysian Armed Forces because it honors the sovereignty and the freedom that we are enjoying right now. And I think it's a way of all Malaysian appreciates because when we see the flag flying, mm -hmm. Us as military armed forces, we see is as a pride of freedom that we are celebrating. Right. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. uh, it's simple and sweet. Yeah, it's simple and sweet, and pride, it's straight to the point. Pride actually. and freedom that yep. is actually flying high, and to remind ourselves that actually we too represent the flag, yeah. mm -hmm. and that's what's supposed to happen. We are supposed to be as high uh, 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 like the flag when it's hoisted all the way up. Yeah. And there's a reason why it's always up because it's ac it actually reminds us about ourselves when it of comes course. to freedom. Now let's talk about uh, freedom when it comes to PDRM, Inspector Adil. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can you please talk to us more? What what does it actually mean to you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Brandon. Thank you to uh, Mio. So first of all, I would, to, I would like to express my gratitude for inviting me, representing, representing uh, Royal Malaysia Police, promoting National Day Parade 2034. Okay, pertaining to your question. Um, actually, even though that uh, we've been independent for a long time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay, but bear in our mind, uh, the feeling is different because those people living in this era, yeah. we don't get the feel that our warriors fought previous before we get the independence. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in line with Jiwa Merdeka, we have to understand. If we direct translate, of course, it's independent soul. Yeah. But in what sense? Yes. How we want to cultivate, how we want to foster the spirit of patriotism. Nice. Okay. So, uh, I have a few of my uh, recommendations here uh, to people out there. First, we must appreciate the freedom. Nice. All right. Okay. We have to understanding the history, how we get the independence, appreciate the value, practicing love for the country, and understanding our culture and our own heritage. Nice. Okay. Thank ah, you very lovely. much, Inspector. Lovely. Now, Mio, as we can see live at Dataran Putrajaya, can you please talk to us more who the arrival of uh, which dignitaries here? All right. Yeah, we believe that in uh, this particular parade down here uh, is the arrival of Yama Bohmad Adatuk Sri Dr. Uh, 
Ahmad Zahid bin Hamidi, the Deputy Prime Minister of Malaysia, making his way down to the Royal Box. Mm -hmm. um, as mentioned, it is actually a procession where we have all of the dignitaries coming down one after another, starting uh, with Yang Ahmad uh, Berhormat, uh, Datuk Sri Haji Fadilah, and now Will, as you can see there very clearly, you know, waving to the Malaysians out there, Yang Ahmad Berhormat, Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid bin Hamidi, the Deputy Prime Minister, coming down to the Royal Box, making his arrival and received by the police, as we can see there. Yes, that's right. Now, as you can see, Deputy Prime Minister, the arrival of him. Mm -hmm. And as he makes his way to the Royal Box, you'll be witnessing as well something similar mm -hmm. of what Datu Sri Haji Fadila Yusuf received, yep. which is definitely as well the Kaulan Kohumatan Utama as well. And you can see right now, as he makes his way to the Royal Box, there'll be a, an official salutation and official welcoming yep. that's installed for him. So Malaysia, let's take this moment to Appreciate this thing because, again, as mentioned, it's not all the time. That you don't see this every day, this. for sure. You don't see, you don't get this every day because this is actually just saved for special occasions, as it is today. That's right. As we Malaysians celebrate our 67th National Day, and this is actually a the sixth time that we have uh, done this. The National National Day Parade being held down in Putrajaya. Uh, as all fellow viewers may know that we have been occasionally, or should I say normally, been doing this down in Nata America, down in Central OKL. But within these past few years, we have been shifting a few places. We have done it in outside of KL as well. Mm -hmm. And this time around, we're back in Puchajaya for this auspicious and great event. Now, in case if you're wondering, uh, mm. we have the uh, soldiers battalion, the first battalion soldiers bearing two flags. We'll get to that in a moment to actually tell you what are those flags and what does it symbolize. Soon later, when uh, His Majesty arrives at Dataran Putrajaya, and as uh, His Majesty makes His Majesty's way to the Royal Box. Now, coming back to our questions that we have for our guests. Now, all three gentlemen have mm -hmm. actually mentioned that, of course, when it comes to Merdeka, it's all about freedom, it's all about pride, yep. it's all about sovereignty. But we, like what Inspector just mentioned, you know, over the past few years, yeah, there are some things that is uh, alarming and we cannot take the, uh, we cannot just put it aside, we cannot just yep. brush it off. Now, the sense of patriotism, mm -hmm. somewhat so, has eroded mm -hmm. and we have to face that fact. Mm -hmm. It could be so many reasons could be because of the uh, difficulties that the, the Malaysians are facing when it comes to uh, perhaps crime index when I mean, talk about scams so on and so forth or mm -hmm. maybe you know peer pressure that their friends are telling them you know what are you still doing here in the country mm -hmm. you might as well just fly off to another country and just be a citizen of that particular country all those kind of negative remarks but then again when those stuff are said to me I'm actually taken, taken aback wow. because it's my country. You know, <laughs> as much as maybe perhaps there are some things that we just don't like. Mm -hmm. We yeah. are the reasons, you know, why and how that we can actually make it better. Mm -hmm. Now, coming back to you, Colonel, when you hear these particular statements being made by other mm -hmm. people, you mm -hmm. know, yes, the sense of patriotism, somehow after the month of August, after the month of September, people tend to just forget about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, Colonel Rushdan, where do we go from here? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, when we talk about patriotism, uh, we have to uh, consider that we are a nation of di uh, diverse uh, people. Um, we have different ways of expressing our feelings. So some people, they are more comfortable with an overt display of patriotism, while some others, they can express their patriotism through other means. So uh, I'm sure that uh, the majority of our population still has a high sense of patriotism, mm -hmm. it's just the way they express it that uh, may not resonate with us. Right. That's why it's important for us to 
properly celebrate days such as this, where we can instill a higher sense of patriotism and pride mm -hmm. in our nation, which we will see later on in the celebration from the faces of those who participate, and also the audience, how proud they are of the nation. Right. Yeah, that's right. Following that question, I just want to put it out to Inspector Adil over here again. Sense of patriotism, showing your love for your nation, for your country. It is, uh, it is easier to actually say that rather than doing it mm -hmm. physically, like really embodying it. To your opinion, at least from the PRM's, PDRM's point of view, how can one actually express themselves better? What should one do to show their love for the country, to show that they are patriotic, not just by waving, waving a flag. It's easy to wave yeah. a flag. Everybody can wave a flag, but instill in them, you think from PDRN's point of view, what should one do to make sure that they embody that spirit of being a Malaysian, loving our country moving forward? Inspector. Okay. <clears throat> Good question, actually. As I mentioned earlier, just now, but I'll be, I'll be more details. Okay, so first of all, we have to understand the history. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, basic history. We mm -hmm. don't go in depth. Yep. We must understand that how long our fighters fighting for to get the independence. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. starting from Portuguese came to Malaya, mm -hmm. 1511, and then followed by uh, Dutch, British, and Japan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So roughly about almost 500 years. Mm -hmm. But the exact figure is 460 something, I think, mm -hmm. almost 500 years. So we have to understand the history. So we could uh, empathy mm. the feeling of this warrior, how they 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 fighting for the independence. Yeah. Okay. So we could feel we have to feel that how they're living in in that era mm -hmm. compared to our living. If we don't understand the history, if we don't understand, we we, we couldn't empathy mm -hmm. the 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 true of the 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 fighting and the the warrior fighting to get the independence. Okay. And then on top of that, we must love our country. Yes. How we want to have love our country. Mm -hmm. Okay, basically very simple. First, we have to, we, we, you must have trust. It's just like in relationship. I give the analogy just like in, in human relationship. Mm -hmm. Before you go to stage of love, you must have trust first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what I'm trying to relate here, we must trust to the government of the day. Mm -hmm. Okay. When we trust, but we don't simply trust. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why I said Jiwa Merdeka. Mm -hmm. okay. Before that, Jiwa Merdeka is the independent soul. It's a freedom, yeah. but how far is the freedom? Okay. The freedom must carry with responsibility. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow. So it must have a frame. All right. Because why? For instance, like, okay, Royal Malaysia Police. Mm -hmm. You, we are in independence already. Mm -hmm. We are freedom to drive our car everywhere. We can bring our vehicle everywhere. Mm -hmm. But bear in your mind, at the same time, we have to obey the law traffic rule. That's right. Yeah, of course. Freedom, but must carry with responsibility. It doesn't matter if you cross the boundary, but you have to bear the consequence. Mm -hmm. How is it going to be? So okay. it must come with good mentality, wow. empathy, all that. Wow. But on top of that, understanding of history, right. then you will, yes. you will feel more. Not by simply wave the flag. It's okay. Yeah. The, spirit, yep. the spirit of patriotism is still there. Mm -hmm. But we, went, we want to inject more. Yeah. That's why our government, I think education system also, is not forcing, but gentle reminder, I think, it is a must for them to pass the history paper mm -hmm. to pursue their edu uh, high, high, high yeah. education. That's right. For them to so get it's them... Good. It's good, actually. A actually. sense of understanding, most important. Yes. That's very important. And, uh, okay, I'm not uh, finished again about that mm -hmm. I mentioned just now. First, you must have trust. Mm -hmm. yep. When you have trust, then you have the loyal. Mm -hmm. When you have the loyal, of course, yeah. it's forming integrity. Right. It's yeah. cover everything. Yeah. Okay? So it comes along with Jiwa Merdeka. Yeah. That's Purity right. of love. That's right. That's All my right. concept. Wow. Yeah. Loving. I mean, I mean, like, he went deep. Inspector Adil actually went deep. Like, mm. you know, really, you know, ha having that empathy, having yeah. that proper understanding and not just, uh, what you might call it, j just on the surface. But it's about going deeper in, in, in understanding what Malaysia is. It's history. That's what Inspector has actually mentioned. There's, there's no two ways about it. You mm -hmm. have to really take it to heart. Yeah. and build that trust. The trust is there and, mm -hmm. of course, loyalty as well. Right. All right. Okay, Mayo, as mm. you can see, we are crossing over live once yep. again to Dataran Putrajaya. Okay, now, who's coming is, down now? This is the arrival of uh, Ahmad Bohormat, Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. As we can see right now, the arrival of um, yeah, Ahmad Bohormat, Datuk Sri Anwar bin Ibrahim, mm -hmm. Prime Minister of Malaysia. And let's just take this moment to to hear the ambient sound of Dataran yep. Putrajaya, to give you that sense of understanding this iconic moment right now. <laughs> 
There we can see fellow viewers, Yang Bab Muhammad, Dato Sri Anwar bin Ibrahim making his way up to the Royal Box. And the difference this time around, there will be the cover. Yes. Yep. And very following very closely behind Yang Bab Bahagia, Dato Sri Dr. Wan Aziza, Dr. Wan Ismail, just behind Yang Bab Muhammad, Prime Minister. And there you have it, the arrival of Prime Minister Yama Bohoma Datu Sri Anwar bin Ibrahim. And we will take you back to Datan Putrajaya for the arrival of uh, His Majesty the King, Sultan Ibrahim, and Her Majesty the Queen, Raja Jadrit Sophia, just in a bit. Yep. Now, uh, we've asked our guests a few questions as well. Sure. And uh, coming back to you, uh, Captain Ridwan, when it comes to freedom, when it comes to how, you know, unfortunately, yeah, some, somehow or other, the sense of patriotism has been eroded somehow, one way or another. Maybe we can get your point of views about this and how do you still remind yourself and yeah. instill that patriotic feeling, not just the month of August or September, but all the time that we carry the Malaysian flag, the Jalo Gemilang, deep in our hearts, wherever we go. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, first of all, I think this is a very challenging question because mm -hmm. nowadays not only that mm -hmm. uh, the children are affected by the technologies the handphones the social mm -hmm. media That's right. so the attention is and focus are different mm -hmm. if you compare 30 years before mm -hmm. so uh, i'll i always like to uh, quote here what my senior say he said uh, to me that do within your means it means that uh, at your level, you have to instill or educate to the younger generations mm -hmm. this patriotism because you cannot expect other people to say, oh, you, uh, the patriotism, the sense of patriotism is uh, becoming less and less. Mm -hmm. But if you do nothing, uh, then mm -hmm. we are not contributing. So do within your means. If you are a teacher, you can uh, instill to the younger generation. Right. And if, if you are a parent, you can instill this patriotism to your kids. That's my point of view. Right. Do within your means. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Kat. All right, lovely. And now we have uh, received a uh, queue. Actually, we have received a signal that uh, the arrival of uh, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the King of Malaysia, is making his way down uh, in Dataran Pucha Jaya. So we will now be witnessing his arrival as well as the uh, Royal Salute. That's right. That will also be happening. Uh, and of course, our guests here in the studio will be helping us out to, to you know, go through whatever it is that's happening down there. And as you can see, making his way, Dataran Pucha Jaya will be right now the arrival of His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the King of Malaysia, and also oh. Her Majesty Raja Zarid Sophia, Queen of Malaysia. 
Let's once again take this time to listen to the ambient sound of Datara Putrajaya and to listen to the iconic noise, the ambient sound, and to witness this beautiful scene all together at Datara Putrajaya. And it is very unique here, as you can see, His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the King of Malaysia, is actually driving himself down Dataram Putrajaya. Not often you actually see the King of Malaysia driving himself down together with his, well, with his entourage, basically. That's right. Now, the King of Malaysia, Sultan Ibrahim, he is a kind to the enthusiast oh, yes. in the first place. And, um, like what Mio just mentioned, you don't see this often, the King of Malaysia. Nope. Driving His Majesty's self to wherever His Majesty goes. Exactly. And, um, yeah.
Mohon perkenaan meneruskan acara Tonggo Yep, okay, that was it. The arrival of mm -hmm. His Majesty Sultan Ibrahim, the King of Malaysia, making his way to the Royal Box for the National Day Parade 2024. And it was definitely a sight uh, to be seen, actually, the arrival of, of the King, of course, with other fellow dignitaries. It is, uh, as what you mentioned over and over again, you don't see this every day. You yep. don't get to get this feeling, this, this whole emotion uh, inside of you looking at, you know, being proud, being appreciative and also being thankful that we live in an independence country, you know, mm -hmm. having all of our uh, amenities, living our lives daily, day in and day out, not having to worry about anything at all. I mean, apart from our regular problems, that is, but, but it, it is still, you know, something that everyone out there should appreciate every single thing that, that you know, we have uh, become, yeah. basically. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Mio just mentioned literally everything that I just wanted to say. <laughs> but of course, I, I just want to thank you for actually putting that out. And uh, from time to time, once again, we'll just head on back to Dataran Putrajaya yep. as we are already soon enough ready to mm -hmm. take over to uh, bring this whole program over to the next item on the agenda, which is the flag rising ceremony. But mm -hmm. there'll be happening shortly. And yep. now we want to bring back to, to our guests right now in the studios and to talk to them and to ask them their opinion and their take on some of the questions that we actually have for them, right? Okay, so, uh, but mm -hmm. before that, Pray, I think we can actually uh, see uh, a few things that's already hap uh, is happening down in Dr. Mm -hmm. before Brennan's actually proceed with the question. Uh, we right. will be proceeding with the next item on the agenda, which is the pledge. Yes. The uh, recitation of the pledge. Rukun Negara, that's Rukun right. Rukun Negara will be conducted by a special mm -hmm. member of the Royal uh, Police of Malaysia. Which be led by Corporal Muhammad Khairul Azhar Abi Paisa, who was actually involved uh, in the incident that happened in the Ulutiram uh, Police uh, Station That's in right. Johor a few months back. That's right. And also, as you can see, also participating are 66 students from the Bachelor of Education Program, PISMP. 
from the Institute of Teacher Education, Ilmukas Campus, Chiras, Kuala Lumpur, and together with them, 40 drumline members. <laughs> For all Malaysians who are tuning into us from all over the world, you could also take part in this pledge yes. wherever you may be. Sejarah adil, adil dan saksama Mencamin satu, satu cara liberal, liberal Terhadap, terhadap tradisi-tradisi kebudayaannya Yang, yang kaya, kaya dan berbagai corak, corak. Membina satu masyarakat progresif Yang akan menggunakan sains dan, dan teknologi moden. moden
as we have uh, seen the recitation of the Rukun Negara That's that was uh, conducted, or should I say that was led by uh, Corporal Mohamed Karu Azhar Abi Baisa, the hero that was involved in the incident at the Ulutiram uh, police station down in Johor. And in the background, we also heard the 14-gun salute. That's event. right. That's right. The 14-gun hmm. salute, in case if you're wondering why 14 uh, with regards yeah. to the uh, national anthem that was uh, played and was sung by the entire nation. Now, the reason being is that 14 cannon shots represents 14 Malay states of the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And moving on with the next agenda, as we are preparing down in Datana Putrajaya, we will now be witnessing uh, the National Day Parade uh, by seven different contingents that, we have, that they have brought down for all Malaysians, well, as well as our international viewers to enjoy, which consists of mm -hmm. the National Contingent, the Community Contingent, the Kembaru Merdeka Jalogamilan Contingent, GLCs and GLICs Contingent, Creative and Broadcast Industry Contingent, mm -hmm. National Sports Contingent, Contingent, as well as the welfare, well-being, and safety contingent, I, and I believe yeah. that there's a few people who are going to be involved. That's when right. I say a few, I don't think it's just one or two, is it? I will tell you how many: <laughs> seventeen thousand two hundred and sixty-two yep. participants, sixty-seven contingent, thirty-six mm -hmm. brass bands, five hundred and thirty-four land and air assets, and one hundred service animals. Yeah, my oh my! Exactly. And starting off, as you can see on your screens, these are the brass band from. From Puzida, which is the Pacharagam Pusat Latihan Music Tentera Darat from the ATM, uh, with 40 members strong, led by Captain Mohammad Rizwan bin Ramli, and assisted by Sergeant Major Brass Band Sergeant Mohammad Ashraf bin Khalid, Sergeant Mohammad Cairo Fami bin Faisal, and Drum Major Staff Sergeant Mohammad Rafiq bin Hassan. That's right, and as you can see right now, the contingent carrying the Jalo Gamilang flag, mm -hmm. measuring 80 by 40 feet, by 100 cadet officers from the Military Training Academy, National Defence University. And this is led by Senior Battalion Officer Muhammad Nashiran bin Zailan. Exactly, and now as you can see, the marching brass band from the SMK, School of Menengah Kemasan Sri Garing from Rawang, 50 members strong, led by Drum Major Siu Ting Tao. And there you have it. Next is the contingent carrying the state flags. Soon after this, particular contingent that is uh, moving right now in front of the screens, as you can see. The state flags right behind the Jalo Gamilang that's being carried from the School of SMK Catholic, led by Drum Major Jacob Lim. from SMK Catholic, led by Trump Major Jacob Limbray Show, with a strength of 50 members passing by your screens as we speak. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can see right now, behind this contingent of SMK Catholic, Mio, who do we have? We have the contingent for uh, being formed by 333 uh, people, actually. Uh, for this one, they are actually carrying all the state's flag led by 100 members of the Corps Cadet uh, Police, as well as the Scouts, uh, the Scouts Association of Malaysia, led by Inche Ahmad bin Juno 
and this particular contingent was actually aligned by the Ministry of Education, Wilayah Persekutuan. And now, moving on, we have the uh, contingent of the community, Malaysia Madani. Exactly. Now, this is coordinated by the Ministry of National Unity. Now, this contingent is led by the Ministry of National Unity, KPN, features a parade of Malaysia's diverse ethnic communities, including Malays, Chinese, Indian, Sikhs, Punjabis, Orang Asli, Siamese, Chetty, Baba Nyonya, and ethnic communities from Sabah and Sarawak. And this clearly indicates, clearly shows how diverse we are as Malaysians all coming in together from all walks of life, from all different races, from all parts of Malaysia, from Perlis right up to Sabah, enjoying ourselves, being a unified country, being Malaysians. That's right. Now, this contingent is the longest, by the way, dressed in complete ethnic attire and accessories symbolising Malaysia's cultural diversity and the uniqueness I must say of this condition is highlighted through special props as you can see right mm -hmm. symbolizing the unity of Malaysian society including the Jiro and Tetuan group we also have the Kompang group dragon and lion dance you just saw it yep. Chinge, Yurumi and Bagra drumming peacock dance mm -hmm. anytime right now it'll appear right in front of your screens and Baja horse and warrior procession yep Looking sharp. Looking I always smart. wanted to wear one of those. <laughs> you have your chance. <laughs> And I must say as well, they look lovely indeed. They have been practicing this weeks on, fellow viewers. So this is not just something that they just woke up and just, you know, got themselves in the parade. They have actually done this over and over again for the past couple of weeks to make sure, to ensure that they deliver the best performance walking down Datana Putrajaya just for all of Malaysians as well as our fellow viewers. That's right, that's right. Now, as you can see, motor vehicles behind. And what unique about this is what you've seen again, these are the well, representation of our fellow brothers and sisters who are from Sabah and Sarawak as well, you know, right. with their horses down here. That's right. And all ladies and gentlemen, moving forward, uh, we have the Jalo Gemilang Kembara Merdeka contingent. Now, this is definitely led by Director General Management of the Malaysian Information Department, in Chennai and Palmi bin Ahmad Tajuddin, and it involves the participation of strategic partner clubs including the Suzuki v Strom Owners Club Malaysia under the supervision of Suzuki Malaysia, which successfully completed the 2024 Jalo Gemilang Independence Journey Convoy across the country. Now, I have to tell you, Mio, that they have travelled a distance of 8,551 kilometres, covering 162 stops across peninsula Malaysia. Impressive, very, very impressive indeed. And with this uh, particular uh, contingent, as you can see there, the track Trackless tram being brought down to Putrajaya. One of our marquee uh, vehicles, I should say. First time being introduced down here during the National Day Parade. Also, not forgetting earlier, as you can see, the riders uh, with their Harley Davidsons and five units of four wheel drives. Suzuki motorcycles, I was mentioned as well. Lovely scenes. As you can see, the passengers are having fun as well. Exactly. And hashtag <laughs> Bukan Bas Biasa. Mm, there you go. Moving on. Uh, now, you can see on your screens are the contingent from the GLC, the government link companies, as well as the government link investment companies from the economy, from banking, telecommunications as well and being organized by uh, PNB, Pembangunan Nasional Berhad. Exactly. Now, they're the largest fund management company in Malaysia with assets under management now exceeding 300 billion ringgit. Now, PNB's portfolio includes strategic investments in leading Malaysian corporate companies, global equities, private investments and real estate. Now, for over four decades, PNB, along with unit trust management company Amanah Saham Nasional Berhad, has remained focused on contributing to the wealth of Bumi Putra and all Malaysians. And right behind there, we have the contingent from Petronas, 107 members strong, led by technologist Muhammad Noor bin Ahmad. 
from uh, the chief security, group chief security from Petronas, our women and men in green and white. Exactly. Petronas has been driving the country's progress in technology, economy, human capital and society since 1974. Now, the contingent consists of 100 employees carrying the Golden Jubilee anniversary theme. And now the combination of a GLIC consisting of Hazana, KWSP, LTAT, KWAP as well as LTH. Proud, waving the flag down, Datana Putrajaya. Following behind is a contingent of government-linked companies, GLCs, that also contribute to the country's economic development. We have Juo Pharma Biotech Berhad, MNRB Holdings Berhad, Sapura Energy Berhad, SP Setia Berhad, and SD Gatri Berhad. Mm -hmm. And following closely behind... We're still with the contingent from the GLC, the combined contingent from GLC. That's right. And in case if you're wondering, the GLC and GLIC, they made up of uh, 200, 2,000, sorry, 2,724 participants. Mm -hmm. And now, as you can see on your screens, the Produa contingent with their assets. Very clearly, as you can see there, one of Malaysia's favourite car, obviously, Maivi is down there, together with the Axia, Beza, Ativa, Alza, as well as Arus. The contingent is being uh, led by Encik Mama Azam bin Ismail, the head of uh, securities, group security from Perodua. And now, we have the guys who are responsible for our electricity. TNB, that's yes. right. Tenaga Nasional Berhad, which will celebrate its 75th anniversary. Now, TNB continues to be a proud beacon that provides reliable light to over 30 million Malaysians, illuminating the lives of the people. Yes, they are. And now we have the men and women from AKPK, Agency Counseling and Dan Pengurusan Credit, led by Dr. Jamali Samsudin, done it together with their very unique float there, as you can see there. An origami float. Hmm. Wow. How long did they take to fold this origami, you wonder? I can't even put one together. <laughs> And of course, ladies and gentlemen, right now is the St. John Institution Band, brought by Malaysian Resources Corporation Berhad, and is led by drum major Muhammad Ali Daniel bin Zukairi. And they brought 52 members along with them. And falling closely behind, the men and women from the Malaysian Resources Corporation Berhad MRCB, 107 members strong, led by Inche Muhammad Shukri bin Hussein and Inche Abdul Rahman bin Aben. 107 members strong for this contingent from MRCB. And ladies and gentlemen, approaching is the YTL Group contingent with its subsidiaries. We've got YTL Corporation, YTL Construction, YTL Cement, YTL Power, YTL Land, YTL Hotels, YTL Communications, and we're talking about, yes, 5G. Yep, and now the contingent. In red, FGV Holdings Berhad, 107 members strong, led by Tuan Haji Azhar Mat Saleh, as well as people know for FGV Holdings, they are one of the major exporters of palm oil in the world. Next up. And now we're approaching the stage, the Royal Box, is the contingent of MSM Malaysia Holdings Berhad, the leading refined sugar producer in the country under the Gula Pry brand. So MSM is the largest sugar refinery company in Malaysia and the seventh largest in the world. And is led by Mohammed Shahmil Azli. And these are the people that you normally see whenever you want to take a flight out of KLIA as well as uh, Subang Airport. We have the Malaysia Airport Holdings Berhad MHB together with the Malaysia Aviation Group MAG uh, led by Inche Mark Yugen, together with the assets, the fire rescue vehicle. 
being portrayed there. That's right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, uh, you know this one. Grab Malaysia mm -hmm. is definitely a leading local super app offering services such as e-hailing, food and parcel delivery, as well as digital payments all through a single app. Yep. Uh, they are led by Inchit Rashid Shuko, Director of Operations and Mobility, along with 100 contingent members consisting of Grab employees and GX Bank. Yes, you can see Grab has brought down two of their assets as well. You can't miss them. They're green in colour. They're everywhere. Not just in KL, but all over Malaysia. And following closely behind are the assets from, there you have it, at DRB Highcom. Look at all those protons. I'm glad I still have mine. <laughs> <laughs> yep, uh, they even brought down the very uh, first uh, Proton Saga, which was first introduced to Malaysians, to the world actually back in 1985. They have a multiple array of vehicles, such as, of course, the Proton Saga, the Wira, Putra, Tiara, Satria, Waja, Juara. I can go on, yes. actually. Yes. Many, many models that they brought down. The Juara as well is in the parade. That's right. And uh, just so you know, Proton is advancing with the introduction of Malaysia's first electric vehicle model, and it's to be launched soon, presenting Malaysia's first electric car, the e mas or should I say Irma 7. It is clear now that Proton is conquering the world, definitely a prize of Malaysian citizens. Exactly. We can't wait for the formal introduction of e mas 7 coming down. As you can see right now. Of a Malaysian built electric vehicle. And now, this is the banking contingent led by the people from a Maybank. Maybank is down here with their signature yellow outfits. 100 members strong, led by Mijit Fazrul, Azad bin Rizwan. Now, they've brought along 107 participants from diverse workforces, including people with disabilities, national sports heroes, and retirees. And with their tri show as well. Hmm. Perhaps we can go to their bank with one of these <laughs> handy vehicles, as you say. Now, of course, uh, this contingent embraces the mission of humanizing financial services. Mm -hmm. There you have it, with corporate image carried through the yellow and black attire that forms the Tiger Stripes motive. And now we have the CIMB Group Holdings Berhad, the next for the banking contingent, led by Inche Muhammad Zamri Mat Yusof from the Human Group Human Resources. 100 members strong, symbolizes the 100th year anniversary since their first branch was opened down in Kuching, Sarawak. Wow, wow, wow. Interesting. The new things every day, don't we? Definitely. And now, one of our favorite banks back when I was in college, the Bank, Mal Bank Simpanan a National Contingent here, led by Inche Izham Abdul Wahab. Exactly. And by the way, they are celebrating their 50th anniversary anniversary with the theme, Supporting Aspirations Crossing Generations, to ensure no Malaysians is left behind. Next up, we have Hong Leong Bank Contingent, a local financial institution. They are now expanding to over 200 branches in Malaysia and even to ASEAN. And they are led by Inche Zalman Zainal, Head of Marketing and Communications. And they brought along 107 members. And following closely behind, we have the contingent from Public Bank, 100 members strong, led by Puan Mirhani Cecilia Binti Abdul Rahmat Heinrich, the Vice President, or should I say the Assistant to the Vice President of the communication, uh, Community and a Communication Strategic Department of Public Bank Group. That's right. Now, in case if you're wondering, where is RHB Bank? Well, there you go. RH Bank Group, a regional financial service provider. They're committed to offering comprehensive solutions to meet ever-changing customer needs. Now, they provide a swift and easy customer experience and is led by an efficient and dedicated team across seven ASEAN countries.
with their mission. Together, we progress. And one of the earlier adopters, or should I say introducers of e-wallets, as well as a huge play in the fintech community, we have Boost Holdings, Sinan Berhad, who has been helping out and has been growing greatly since 2017. Next up, we have the communications contingent led by Telecom Malaysia. Wow. Mm. There you have it, 110 participants led by Inche Muhammad Hazrin bin Muhammad Ali. So TM, the nation's leading integrated telecommunications company, offers smart services and innovative solutions to various market segments, including communities, businesses and governments. Now, they've brought along their assets as well, Mio, flexing it really good right now yep. in Dataran Putrajaya. And we are now looking at the contingent from Cellcom DG and their flow. Hmm. Their assets together down here, led by Inchi Hairunizam Abu Hassan, 107 members strong. They are brought down together with us an LED truck together with an autonomy buggy and a RoboDog AI. Wow. Next up. Next up, we have the Maxis contingent with a harmonious green color. Now, they symbolize diversity as well with their colors. Now, the Maxis contingent is among the GLIC contingent that have constantly shown commitment every time we celebrate our National Day celebration. Now, they are led by Vicky Barati with a strength of 107 members consisting of various races and ages. And now you're watching U Mobile, the contingent from U Mobile led by Inchik Mohamad Shuhaidi bin Abdullah. U Mobile has definitely grown throughout the years and has delivered such a great service. And moving on, a very interesting industry, which is our industry actually, the creative and broadcast industry led by the industry itself from FINAS, which is led by Encik Muhammad Shazli Muhammad Khia. And yeah, the representation of Astro Show as well. They're down here with a selection of local celebrities. That's Brandon. right. We've got Nas Muama, Anwar Bek Bohal, and Dennis Sin. And, and then you can see Upin and Ipin. No, it's not Mio. No, it's not Mio. Of course, the, we have all of the characters from uh, our local animation houses. Obviously, you know these guys. You've seen them around. That's right. you got Opa down there. you got Kat Rose, Tok Dalang, Uncle Mutu, Atong, and the whole bunch. Wow. Exactly. Loco Park Production, a pioneer of 3D animation in the country with over 10 billion views on YouTube. Goodness. Now, they have successfully brought Malaysian animation to the world's attention. And we got DD and friends in the house as well. I bet you all the kids down in the Tampu are enjoying themselves looking at this. Even His Majesty the King is enjoying this show together with Her Majesty. Have you seen Bobo Boy just yet? No? Yeah, they're very closely behind together with Mika Matu as well. There you have it. I'm surprised, hmm. Mio, you know all these cartoons. Well, it's sort of like in, uh, an occupation hazard, actually. <laughs> and now, now we take a look at our colleagues. Yep. This is the broadcast stations that, that's being brought down. We got representation from RTM, Bernama, Media Prima, Berhad, Astro, Miasat Global, uh, Berhad, and together with My TV. Exactly. Hmm. And of course, they also include TV and radio personalities. And this is the national sports contingent. Our athletes and our ex-athletes are here. They're from uh, the KBS, MotoGP, as well as the Low Loader. These are all the heroes and heroines of the nation. Uh -huh. And yeah, this one intrigues you the most. This intrigues me the most, ladies and gentlemen. The MotoGP team, seven motorbikes. Now, there are, if you're wondering who are on those motorbikes, or can we say pocket bikes? Well, we need to learn the terminology better. Exactly. <laughs> These consist of uh, what? MotoGP icon. 8 to 16 years of age, FIM Mini GP Malaysia Series. And now, we will start off with the 
next uh, contingent? The next contingent, ladies and gentlemen, has got to be the MRCB. This is the contingent of the National Anti-Financial Crime Centre, the NFFC together represented by their float as well. This is a combination of various parties. And now we can see the contingent from the Perkhidmatan Awam. The public service contingent? Yes. Yeah. And it involves 210 members from all 28 ministries and government departments led by Yang Bapagia Dato Mohammed Shaiful bin Ibrahim, Deputy Director General of Public Service Operations. Now, this contingent includes public servants from various races, groups and sectors, including people with disabilities, and they feature public servants who provide direct services to the public according to their respective duties. And following closely behind the contingent from KPDN, 200 members strong, led by Tuan Mohamed Zamil bin Jamaluddin. Also included is the Flying Squad. 200 members being represented by KPDN. And it's led by Tuan Muhammad Zamil. Muhammad Zamil. That's right. And uh, here's a fun fact, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this division plays a crucial role in ensuring laws are adhered to and assisting the ministry in managing the cost of living. Over a period of five years, the enforcement division officers has successfully resolved 160,333 complaints with 48,600 cases processed. And now we have the brass band from the Angkatan Pertahanan Awam Malaysia, led by Drum Major Corporal Pertahanan Awam Afzan bin Ramli, 50 members strong, following closely behind is the contingent. Exactly. The APM, the Malaysian Civil Defence Force, led by Lieutenant Colonel Civil Defence Mohammed Rohaidi bin Halim. With the strength of 261 members, this contingent consists of regular officers, voluntary members and CISPACO cadets. Also present in the contingent are the Special Defence, Special Civil Defence Unit, PASPA, and the APM K9 Unit. And they brought along their assets, as you can see, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. With them, they have the Special Rescue Vehicle, SRV, Communication Rescue Vehicle, CRV, as well as the Rapid Rescue Vehicle, RRV. Exactly, ladies and gentlemen. And following are the land and water operational vehicles. Now, they include heavy rescue vehicle, HRV, medical rescue vehicle, MRV, light rescue vehicle, LRV, special service rescue vehicle, SSRV. You can see three water rescue vehicles. They include jet ski, sea leg, and their Destiny 32 foot boat. And now we have the Rella. Yes, first of all, led by their brass band, 40 members strong, led by drum major Nurliza Binti Abu Kasim. And these are being represented not just from over here in Peninsula Malaysia, but also from their training centre down in Sabah. That's right. Now, the Rela Malaysia contingent, moving with pride, definitely, showcases a march Rela by Commissioner Mohammad Razib bin Suhaimi, with a strength of 200 officers and members, with the department's motor, loyal and devoted. Rela has progressed by presenting a contingent that includes 50 members on community safety patrol assignments, 50 members on border control assignments, four specialized attachments among Rela officers. They include Rela perimeter control officers, Rela marksman team officers, Rela armament me mechanic officers, and Rela traffic trainer officers. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And now, as you're watching on screen, right now is the contingent or should I say the brass man from the Immigration Department of Malaysia led by Hyrule Afendi bin Hamidana 40 members strong for this marching band from the Immigration Department of Malaysia and the contingent as well Brandon exactly now, the Immigration, Malaysian Immigration Department contingent consisting of 300 members and led by Deputy Assistant Director, 
Ahmad Rashazri bin Abdul Rahim. So with the motor, sovereignty and national security is definitely a shared responsibility. The Immigration Department provides various services to Malaysian citizens, permanent residents and foreign visitors through several initiatives such as Visa Liberalisation Plan 2024, QR Code Immigration Checks in Johor, Autogate facilities for 63 countries and Baitul Mahaba Initiative for Foreign Children Detainees. And now here's the marching band from our men and women from JPJ, Jabatan Pengangkutan Jalan Malaysia. 40 members strong, led by drum major Tuan Muhammad Sharul Amin bin Muhammad Azhari. Now they brought along, of course, their members. The Malaysian Road Transport Department contingent and not to forget they brought along their assets as well. We'll get to that shortly. The aspiration of Malaysia Medani, Jiva Merdeka, the department aims to become a world-class enforcement agency with efficient, agile and thorough governance on all road safety regulations for national sustainability based on humanizing digital technology. Let's talk about their assets, Mio. Yep, we have. We are seeing here down. JPJ has brought down uh, six of their motorbikes, Falcon Unit 12, cars of uh, enforcement and operations, together with two mobile JPJ mobile counters. Actually, exactly. That's being brought down to serve the nation. And you can see the gentleman from JPJ. Hmm. Any comments, Brandon? <laughs> I would like to believe my biceps are as big. Yep. But you can believe that. Not going to happen. Six units of Kawasaki versus 650cc motorcycles functioning as enforcement units. Now, they're equipped with technology for detecting, recording and notifying traffic violations. Yes, and moving on, now we have the brass van from the prison's department. Led by drum major Sergeant Sharizan bin Izwan Shah, 40 members strong. And for this particular brass band, they are actually being present, represented by the Henry Gurney School, following closely uh, the contingent. This particular contingent is being led by uh, Muhammad Amir Zal bin Abdullah, 200 members strong from the prison's department. Aligning with the theme of this year's 234th Prison Day celebration, reformation towards the Civilization Development Center. The Malaysian Prison Department continues to strengthen high impact rehabilitation programs and skills and education for inmates. And on screen right now are the men and women from the brass band of the Royal Customs of Malaysia. Led by Ketua Pancharagam, leader of the band, Tuan Muhammad Shah Rizal bin Muhammad Ghazali and drum major Encik Muhammad Ayril bin Ibrahim. 45 members strong, closely following the contingent from the Royal Customs of Malaysia. That's right. Together the, with the assets. The Royal Malaysian Customs Department showcases a parade led by Assistant Customs Director Tuan Muhammad Khairul bin Mat, with 200 officers equipped with various firearms. This includes a combination of passenger inspection branch officers, enforcement operations, marine and elite tactical team handling high-profile cases known as Customs Operational Battle Force Response Assaults or COBRA. Mm. So they brought along their assets as well, as you can see, the Customs Department, the High Speed Patrol Boat, Series 4 Chaloring, I hope I'm saying it right, with Assistant Customs Director Tuan Art Lee, who is also a national boxer with numerous international championships. And earlier you have, you have also seen the K9 unit from the Customs and an array of vehicles from the Customs Department. And now we have the contingent from Smart Natma. And this contingent is being led by Muhammad Hafizul bin Abdul Halim with the 
contingent consisting of 120 members strong. That's right. And uh, if you can see right behind your screens, they brought along their assets. Four units of Kawasaki Mule Pro DX UTVs and two units of forklift container truck MAN. Mm -hmm. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. And as you can see right now, live on TV, some might say the moment that we've been waiting for. Mm -hmm. But let's make way first for the team of Smart, and there you have it. This is the brass man from Bomba, from our fire rescue department, led by Ahmad Najaba bin Zul and Drum Major Muhammad Zul Amin bin Jumain. Ladies and gentlemen, tuning from around the world, marching with discipline and determination, the team is committed to providing the best firefighting and rescue services to the community and country, firmly holding to their motto, firefighters, pillars of national rescue. Men and women in blue uniforms and specialized teams such as the Emergency Medical Res Rescue Services, EMRS, Water Rescue Team, Road Traffic Accident Rescue Unit, Fire Forensic Team, Fire Air Unit and multi skill Team, CBRNE and Hasmat Unit, Unit, structural Fire Unit, Special Technical Operation and Rescue Team of Malaysia, Detection Unit as well. And Mio, let's talk about their assets. Yep, they have brought down an array, a whole array of assets. We're not talking about these gentlemen on here, but of course we're talking about the assets that they have brought down together with them. They have the Amphibious Rigid Inflatable Boat, Arib, together, together with Kevlar Boats as well. And if you can see who's on top of the truck, Mio, mm -hmm. we have Yambo Homa, Tuan Nga Kormeng, the Minister of KPKT, mm -hmm. along with the Deputy Minister and the Director General of the Malaysian Fire and Rescue Department. Yep. And there again, you have it. <laughs> being represented by the ladies as well as the gentlemen, the men and women, to ensure our safety should it arise, proudly waving the national flag, Jalogomilanga, waving to the crowd. Don't you wish you're down in Puchajaya right now? I yeah. wish I was on the truck here. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you, you can't be on a truck. Those trucks are only reserved for specific people. <laughs> exactly. With, with certain qualifications <laughs> and uh, requirements. That's right. As you can see, there are trucks. And uh, let me just talk to you some of the trucks that they brought along. One of them, uh, one water tanker and one foam tender. And now for inclusive behind, uh, the condition from, this is the Keselamatan Negara National Safety Contingent. Yes, exactly, the security contingent. From uh, Maritime Malaysia, APNM, Agency Pengokwasaan Maritime Malaysia. 41 members strong from the brass van, led by Lieutenant Maritime Muhammad Amiru bin Abdullah. Assisted by Pegawai Warren Satu, Maritim Abu Bakar bin Ani and Drum Major bin Taramuda, Maritim Nordin bin Muhammad, together with the contingent from APMM. Led by Commander Maritim Afendi bin Muhammad Fadil. 350 members strong, consisting of the men and women from APNM, from the star team, from the Air Maritim Subang team station, as well as AMSAS, together with their assets, as you can see here. Digital camouflage tactical uniform, donning them. Office uniform for Alpha, office uniform for Bravo. Flight uniform, special action and rescue team, star team, and rescue swimmer uniform and equipment. The Malaysian Maritime Enforcement Agency is responsible for enforcing federal laws applicable in Malaysian waters. Coordinating national maritime search and rescue operations of various types of emergency at sea and ensuring the safety. And here are their assets, as we have seen earlier, the MSU Mobile Surveillance Unit, together with the Pate Boat 83, Painting Boat 01, and Percussor Boat 35, ensuring the safety of our waters within its jurisdiction. That's right. Menyusul ialah pembawa bendera Jalur Gemilang dan Sang Saka Biru.
And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to pass it over to our guest in the studio, Inspector Muhammad Adil. Talk to us. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Uh, so now, uh, Royal Initiative is thinking here, a total of 9 yeah, one BDRM personnel. Okay, so now we can see it's a Royal Malaysia Police Contingent or PDRM. A total of 981 PDRM personnel are participating in today's parade. The contingent is led by uh, the Honourable Inspector General of Police, Tan Sri Razaluddin Hussein, accompanied by 30 senior officers and members from the Mounted Unit and the Federal Reserve Unit or FRU. Um, yeah, the presence of this top leadership is a source of immense pride for the entire forces as we collectively contribute to the success of this year's National Day Parade. And right now we have the uh, PDRM contingent, Inspector. Yeah, now this uh, flag bearer, a flag bearer. Do we have the flag bearer, a dedicated group of 100 PDRM members, including training officers from various Royal Malaysia Police Training Centres. And now the brass band of PDRM. Oh, uh, this one leading the PDRM parade today, the brass band, uh, guided by ASP Mass Moro Ben Edward and Drum Major Corporal Muhammad Farah Reza Bin Ramlan with a robust team of 97 police officers. And uh, Inspector, we see veteran members as well being part of this uh, contingent. Yes, uh, veterans members, uh, retired officers. Uh. Right. So remembering our veterans, we welcome a group of 39 retired police officers led by ASP Osman bin Daud, honouring their years of dedicated service. Beautiful. And now what we can see, this is a working dress detachment. We see the working dress detachment, this group consists of 189 officers in uniforms representing general duties, tourist police, UN mission and the traffic investigation and enforcement department. Nice. Can you talk to us, uh, the men the man and women in orange, they are from which unit, sir? Uh, from orange, from the PGU or Pasukan Gerakan Udara. Mm -hmm. uh, this one for Federal Reserve Unit with a shield from FRU. That's right. Wearing the red helmet. And here are the K9 units. Yes, the K9 unit. Uh, the Kenai Unit Detachment led by Inspector Alagumani Anak Lelaki Murugia together with the officers and personnel. Um, this, uh, as we can see, the dogs actually, uh, the breed German Shepherd assigned to CID or Criminal, Criminal Invest Investigation Department and the Labrador, uh, Labrador assigned to Narcotic uh, Crimin Criminal Investigation Department. So two type of breeds. Lah. Even their canine units have shades, Mio. <laughs> uh, they, they are well trained. <laughs> they are definitely well trained. <laughs> wow, Inspector, talk to us what's happening. We have a special presentation. Yes, yes, yes this is a press, uh, special presentation, special formation. We call it uh, Formation 67. Okay, as you can see, uh, their movement is not a conventional movement. This is a special tactical movement. So they show how they, they carry the weapon in tactical way. Right. Okay, so um, let me brief a bit about this. In commemoration of the 67 National Day Collaboration, RMP and engaging formation display involving various operational units under the KDNKA. This, this performance is specially designed to enhance the National Day festivities by showcasing a unit formation that visually represents the numbers 6 and 7, symbolizing the 67th anniversary of independence this year. So, Various operational vehicles and logistics utilized by KDNK and RMP will also be featured in the display, providing a comprehensive overview of PDRM's capabilities and readiness in maintaining public security and order. So as you can see along the side, these are the operational vehicles involved. Include um, one unit, we call it APC Typhoon, right? two units APC Jars, two units Robust Hylas, and six units BMW Red 1250GS. Wow. 
This is also actually one of the larger contingents that have been brought down to Datana Purajaya. Combination of its personnel as well as its asset in this factor. Yeah. And now here are the bikes mm -hmm. of PDRM, definitely as you can see. Okay, so the PDRM vehicle detachment is showcasing now 29 vehicle asset led by the Honorable Datuk Sri Yusri bin Haji Hassan Basri, uh, the Director of the Traffic Investigation and Enforcement Department, or easy to call is uh, Director of Traffic. Lah. Right. Okay, so here's a uh, look at some of features vehicles. So so as what the Datuk riding now, BMW RT 1300. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is one of the newly asset that we received this year. And other than that, we can see uh, Kawasaki GTR 1400, Yamaha FGR 1300, and now it's water cannon mm -hmm. using for FRU. And then we also have three type of Honda, Honda Civic 1.8 FC, Honda Civic 1.5 FE, Honda City 1.5 S. These vehicles serve as the front line of the crime prevention and maintaining security. Wow. What intrigued me right now is actually, as we can see on the right side of the screen, a very special vehicle. Yeah, Here. that one's uh, CBRNE, or we call it MVF-5 Docking. It's a multi-mission heavy robotic system for emergency response. It assists first respondents to perform their duties in the most difficult or challenging and the threatening uh, situation. Actually, it's a bomb dis disposal. It's a robotic system. It's a robotic system, which robotic means to system. say that you don't need a human to yeah. man that thing, it's automatic. It's aut automatic, fully by robotic, so we can control that. But so far we haven't, because we don't have a serious... We don't want to use that. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> Definitely. And this is... You know, we are, we are coming towards the end of the police contingent, and now we are getting ready for the special air show that will be starting very, very soon by the Royal Malaysia Air Force. But before that, thank you so much, Inspector Adil, You're for welcome. walking through the PDRM contingent together with its assets and, of course, to talk to us about their readiness when they are definitely needed every single day, to be honest, Mio. Mm -hmm, exactly. And as we await for the beginning uh, or the start of the air show, oh which is goodness. happening now, we, we, I mean, we just, just to share with our audience, We've actually seen this already during the rehearsal and you're in it for a treat. I have to say that, you know, that's the purpose of, of our job, I would say. <laughs> you get to see exactly. things, you know, earlier as compared. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you who are tuning in to us, um, I would say if you're just joining us, mm -hmm. you just made it just in time. As, as you can see right now, what we're going to do is to pass you back to Datran Putrajaya and we'll let the on-ground MC to guide you along the way. Enjoy. <laughs>
Seksan pertunjukan juga darah pada pagi ini Tiba di sisi pesawat-pesawat pejuang Jadi Sukhoi SM30 MKM F-A-H-T Hornet Dan Volvo Mark 208 Diikuti pesawat jenis ini Airbus A4M Dan Nabi Milik Tentera Laut Jelajah Malaysia iaitu Super League Mark 1-0 dan Agusta AS-55F-Fenet. Milik-milik Arnel iaitu Agusta AW-139. APFF iaitu Eurocopter AS-365F-3-4 dan akhir sekali milik Bomba iaitu A-109 dan MH-17. Pesawat pada hari ini diketuai oleh para pegawai TUDI. Yaitu bagi pesawat Hawk, formasi ini diketuai oleh Lieutenant Colonel TUDI dan Consign TUDI. Hadirin sekalian, sila tumbuhkan perhatian ke arah hadapan kertas utama. Membuka tirai pertunjukan udara pada hari ini. Kami mulakan dengan salam salam kenalan. Daripada pesawat besar pejuang UDM Sebanyak tiga ribu pesawat Kini berkurang dalam Masih beri Meluncur dengan perhatian Pekajuan 600 km sejam Di kelihatan 150 meter Dengan pelanggan jagat jata Pantas sempurna Kami bawakan kepada anda Pesawat Home to zero
Hadirin sekalian, sama-sama kita nantikan Tepungnya just witnessed earlier was the air show, the super air show being uh, uh, organised by the well, by the Air Force, the Malaysia Air Force, the Royal Malaysia Air Force, also with the uh, participation as well from other uh, military as well as from the police and the uh, bomber as well, they were around. But now, going back to Putrajaya, a lot of things to say actually, but yep. <laughs> the show needs to go on. We need to go on because right now is the contingent from the veterans of uh, the ATM, 40 members strong. That's right. Mm. So right now, we are about to pass this whole segment yep. to Colonel, Colonel Rashdan bin Abdul Rashid, Commander of the 1st Infantry Division Royal Engineers Reg Regiment. So, Colonel, over to you. Over to you. Thank you, Mio and Brandon. The leading uh, the Malaysian Armed Forces contingent is the central band of the Royal Armoured Corps, consisting of one officer and 58 members. It is led by Lieutenant Colonel Zaiful Azman bin Zainul Abidin, the Director of Music of the Central Band of the Royal Armoured Corps. Next up is the contingent of the Special Forces of the Malaysian Armed Forces. This contingent consists of the 21st Special Services Group, or 21 GGK, the Naval Special Forces, Pascal, and the S Force Special Forces, Pascal. You can see some of them wearing ghillie suit. Those are the snipers. Behind them, 
are the assets of the Special Forces, comprising of scramblers, special operation vehicles, rapid intervention vehicles, a command vehicle, and finally at the back, the yeah, rigid inflatable raiding crafts. This is the command vehicle that can be deployed as a forward command post. Next is the combined brass band of the 10th Para Brigade, consisting of 55 members under the leadership of Drum Major Warrant Officer 2 Ahmad Rashidi bin Baharin. Leading the 10th Para Brigade contingent is the leading Para Battle Group, consisting of eight officers and 206 personnel, and commanded by Lieutenant Colonel Alimuddin Shah bin Abdul. This 10th Para Brigade is a rapid deployment force of the Malaysian Armed Forces and is also the elite unit of the Army. The formation is deployed through joint operations involving land, sea and air elements to achieve its mission. The Maroon Beret symbolizes the identity of an airborne or air assault unit. And as we can see, different uniforms that are being worn by the well, by the contingent as well, and the assets here. Yes, the company in the 10th Bar Brigade are their assets, led by the set scrambler motorcycles used by the Pathfinders, and then the Supercat 6x6 all terrain mobile platform. They also display their Vemtech S3 weapon carrier vehicles equipped with AGL and HMG, and two units of 105mm howitzers. This is one of the things that a lot of people are looking forward to you know, when it comes to showcasing the assets of uh, the ATM, of what we have for the nation. You know. Definitely. And, uh, so the Vemtech weapon carrier can be equipped with automatic grenade launcher or heavy machine gun and they can destroy any fort enemy fortifications and light armoured vehicles. Following closely behind them are the elements from the 4th Mechanized Brigade. Wow. And these are their main battle tanks. The PT-91 Pendekar with 125mm gun. But leading the way for the 4th Mechanized Brigade are two Lipanbara armored vehicles, followed by Gambita 8x8 armored vehicles. Also, ACB-300 Adnan IFV and two MIFV K200A1, equipped with a heavy machine gun. Again, we see this formidable force on the battlefield, which is our Pendekar main battle tank. Next up, coming into view is the combined brass pan of the 1st Battalion Royal Malay Regiment and the 1st Battalion Royal Rangers Regiment, led by Staff Sergeant Saiful Abdullah bin Ahmad. Uh, we are still viewing this main battle tank. Mm -hmm. Such a majestic presence. And here we have the brass band. Yes. And we now we have the brass band from the Royal Malaysia Navy. Nope. This brass band leads the Army Hybrid Contingent, which consists of a total of 207 personnel, led by Lieutenant Colonel Zul Hisham bin Yusuf. Yep, we're still with the ATM. On the right ATM. is the ceremonial mounted squadron from the Royal Armoured Corps, led by Lieutenant Colonel Sharul Azuddin bin Maudu. The horses purchased for the squadron is specially selected to ensure it has the right temperament to handle the various elements of ceremonial events such as this, such as being able to stay calm amidst loud sounds of explosives and noises. And also, we can see the war dog team of the Malaysian Army, consisting of highly trained personnel and dogs specializing in tracking and detection tasks, fully managed by the Wolf Branch of the Army Combat Training Center. And we're talking about the Wolf Branch. Right. Mm -hmm. And yeah. now we have the ceremonial mounted squadron here. The cavalry? It's a ceremonial mounted squadron. Mm -hmm. That's my good friend, Dr. Kong Shara Azadeh Maimalut. Shout out. <laughs> Next up is Malaysian Hybrid Assets, which are led by 12 BMW motorcycles and two Honda Civic petrol cars. They are used for escort and ceremonial duties. 
Behind them are two all-terrain vehicles used by infantry units for reconnaissance and patrolling. Next, weapon carrier vehicles used by infantry units carrying HMG or AGL. We also have mortar carrier vehicles, 81mm water. GK Mark I Gatling gun platform used by infantry units. These are the ATVs. We also have G-Wagon heavy machine guns and Matis M. As you can hear the roaring sounds in Dataran Putrajaya, and I wonder why. Hmm. This must be your colleagues, you know. <laughs> I'm sure they are. <laughs> yeah. And the vehicle they are on. Yes, well, we have Vemtech S3 weapon carrier vehicles. More vehicles carrying IGLA, surface to air missile support launching unit, one rapid ranger also for low-level air defense. And now we can see tanks being transported, and in front of that is a tactical floating bridge, short integrated ramp, possessed by the bridging squadron of the Royal Engineers Regiment. Right, this is the ATM. Now, can we rush that before we go? We can see huge trucks that's carrying something huge. Are those missiles? These are tank transporters before that. That was uh, the multi-launch rocket system, MRS. Right. right. Mm -hmm. It's for delivering rockets at uh, great distances. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, as it's by the ATM. Again, as mentioned, one of the marquee contingent for every single National Day Parade. And now, thank you so much uh, to Colonel. Pleasure. And now we'd like to jump on uh, to uh, Captain Ridwana for the next up, which is the contingent from the Royal Malaysia Navy. Captain. Yeah, thank you. Okay, leading the parade is the brass band from the Royal Malaysia Navy and uh, marching from the um, 207 guys. There are only three trailers over there, you can see on the left side of the plate, in which we cannot, uh, because we cannot bring our sets here, the fleet are uh, impossible to be yeah. on the road. Not enough right. water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, for the first trailer, you can see, I hope they change the, okay, over there. This is the missile, missile which is used by the uh, combatant. Uh, over there, he's focusing there. By Kadilik, Kadijibat, Kadilik, Kadikasturi, Exocet, MM40, Rock 2. Uh, below that is the surface to uh, uh, subsurface to air missile, which is used by the submarine mm -hmm. okay, for our strategic access, and also a torpedo behind there. One tip about the missile you mentioned earlier that how long can it travel for? Uh, it, the, for the MM40 Block 2, it can travel around 65 kilometers. Mm -hmm. So you, it's used to fire from ship to another ship. Right, all right. And one of these missiles uh, has been fired before? Yeah, it is. Uh, we have uh, made a test fire almost every year. Uh, pre previously, uh, we make a salvo firing. We fire two times of missile. It hits the target at uh, around 55 kilometers. Wow. Yeah. All right. right. Thank you so much, uh, Captain. And now you're seeing on your screens uh, the contingent from the Royal Malaysia Air Force, led by their brass band, uh, Captain Sabri bin Hamil and assisted by Sergeant Major Pegawai Warren Udara 2 Syed Ahmad Ruzaimi bin Syed Kamil as well as the Drum Major Fleet Sergeant Muhammad Zulkifli bin Wandi and now we are on screen right now together with the Royal Malaysia Air Force led by Lieutenant Colonel Fazli Ahmad and their assets. So maybe we can get the input from our guests here in the studio. Yeah. Let's talk about the assets here. Yes. Okay, this is also a missile which is used by the fighters. Mm -hmm. okay. It is used for the combat. It is air to surface missile. So this is designed actually for them to attack a maritime force mm. at sea. So when they travel, for let's say they go around 800 kilometers from Malaysia, they hit a ship which have a bad intentions to our country. Right. 
and now on your screens are the Brass Brass members from the Fuzida 36, a 25 member strong, led by Warrant Officer 2 Zainuddin Bin Minhat, assisted by Sergeant Major Brass Band, Staff Sergeant Zulkisham bin Mohamad Noor, and Drum Major Staff Sergeant Mohamad Sharizan bin Abdul Rahim. Following closely behind are the contingent from the Alba. From Malbat, yes, Malbat 850-12, which will be proceeding to the mission in Lebanon very soon, Captain. Yeah. And this particular uh, contingent is being led by Colonel Johan Afendi bin Haji Muhammad Saleh. Malbat has recently made famous by one of the movies film that was produced earlier, mm -hmm. a few years ago, showcasing the strength as well as the, well, the performance, or should I say, how, how great Malbat is to the nation as well and to the world. That's right. And so next up, Brandon, who do we have here on screen? We have the Malaysian Armed Forces Women.